Next non-verbal tip on becoming magnetic is something that is so small and subtle, but goes a long way. And that is, now when you are in communication with somebody, it's really important to not interrupt. I think people feel very nervous for there to be empty space in a conversation, but really, there's power to that. Know what people want out of a conversation with you. I want to tell you something that people love, and that is being magnetic is the secret art to subtle communication. It's when you have that charisma and allure that draws people in to want to be around you. And then when they leave, they have felt that energy that they can't quite put their finger on. I believe that communication is the number one skill that you should learn to take you many places in life. But the magnetic qualities can open up doors for you in many different ways. So today we're gonna to be diving into different ways, verbal and non-verbal, on how you can become more magnetic. Hello, welcome back to Highest and Best. My name is Karis, and here we talk about how to elevate your life, fulfill your full potential, and become the highest and best version of yourself. I am excited to talk about this today because I believe that being magnetic just allows opportunities to come into your life because the fact that people want to be around you more. People wanna be in your energy, in your aura, and it comes down to skill. It is something that can be learned. So let's talk about it. Now, if you are on YouTube and you enjoy this episode, then I would love for you to subscribe and join the family. And if you are listening to this in the audio format, then it would be amazing if you could leave a review as this is a very new podcast for me. So I'd love to hear if you enjoy it and follow along for more content similar to this. Okay, let's talk about how to become magnetic. Okay, so this episode is gonna be split into two. First, we're gonna discuss the verbal ways to become magnetic, and second, we will discuss the nonverbal ways. So diving into verbal, first, I want to tell you something that people love, and that is to hear their own name. Now, there's many different ways you'd be able to actually use somebody's name in conversation. The first is I always recommend when you are meeting somebody for the first time, ideally shake their hand. I think that it's really important as a sign of respect. But when you do get introduced is say their name. Not only is it gonna help you confirm and it's actually gonna sink into your brain more to actually remember their name, but they will also enjoy hearing their name when you say it. Then when you leave that interaction and you say goodbye, say their name again. It will allow it to sink in more into your head so you remember it next time, but same again is that they will enjoy to hear it as well. The next thing is active listening. Now I put this in verbal, but it can technically be in verbal and non-verbal. And that is basically showing that you are very engaged in the conversation with somebody else. So have you ever talked to somebody and they give no verbal or non-verbal cues, they're actually listening to you, it will drive you insane. You want to show that you are listening to them, engaged in what they're saying, and you actually care about the story they're telling or the thing that they're talking about. So in order to do that, you want to practice active listening. Now the verbal part of this is basically confirming in different ways. So, ah, yes, I understand. Wow, really? Those are kind of like your verbal ones. And then the, Nonverbal is gonna be more of your nods and your open body language and eye contact and just showing that you are engaged in that conversation. Now, when you are speaking to somebody, you want to make sure you are asking questions. Asking questions and being genuinely curious about what somebody is saying will go far in that conversation. Now, when you are asking questions, you also wanna make sure you're asking open-ended questions and allow them to talk more, they open up more, and they'll feel more connected to you. When it comes to listening to somebody's story, I like to always think about, I need to listen and learn this story as if I need to repeat it again later. And if you think about it like that, it will prompt you to ask genuine questions and try and basically go down their rabbit hole and learn more about what they're saying and who they are. And at the end of the day, people love to talk about themselves. It's just the way humans are. And so the more that you're able to go into depth into who they are and the things that they like and the things that they want to talk about, the more they will automatically feel connected to you. Now, one thing that I will say, and this goes for communication, 
as a whole, but it is crucial. And that is do not feel like you need to always relate it back to yourself. Now, I think in some instances, it is a good way to relate to some people, but it's not every instance. It's not every situation that you have to then say something about yourself. Let it be about them. Now, when you are in communication with somebody, it's really important to not interrupt. Now, I know sometimes we can get really excited and enthusiastic about what that person's talking about and we want to put in our two cents, but let people finish what they are saying. Wait till they're done take a pause and then say what you want to say. Also, that pause can be extremely powerful when you wait until they are done asking a question. So if somebody asks you something, pause for a second and then answer. I think people feel very nervous for there to be empty space in a conversation, but really, there's power to that. If you watch some of the most powerful leaders or powerful speakers, they allow themselves to have pauses in between things that they're saying. Or if they're being interviewed by somebody, they will allow there to be a pause before they give their full answer. So let the pause happen, stand in confidence, and then give your answer. It also allows you to gather the thoughts together of what you want to say so that you're able to speak it without any sort of filler words. Now, another verbal way to become magnetic is to know what people want out of a conversation with you. Now, this can go in a couple of different ways, but something that I have heard before, which I loved, first of all, not every person's problem needs your solution. Naturally, I go very into a problem solver mindset. If you know me, you know I'm a very plan strategy. Like I'll get you from A to B, just tell me where you want to go and I'll help you create that plan to, you know, get over the hurdles. And that's just the way my brain is wired. <laughs> However, not everybody wants that solution. Some people just want to vent and to be heard. So something that I heard a while ago on TikTok, actually, I think it was, and it said to ask people, do you want to be heard, helped or hugged? So do you want me to give a solution and ways to get over your problem? Do you want me to sit and just listen to you and hear what you're saying? Or do you wanna not talk about anything and just have a hug? And I loved to hear that. It just reconfirmed for me that not everybody needed to have an answer to what they're saying. Sometimes they just want to come to you and for you to be able to listen to them and allow that weight to be released off of them. Also, the more I became self-aware, the more I was able to pinpoint that for myself too. So sometimes when I would go to my fiance with certain things, it's not that I wanted him to give me an answer about it. I wanted him to allow me to talk out certain situations for me to get clarity for myself. But really, I just wanted him to be an ear in what I was saying. Next, let's talk about compliments. I think that this is an incredible way in order to one, connect with other people, but two is to also step outside of your comfort zone. I feel like we often get nervous to compliment somebody in case they take it the wrong way. But if you like somebody's dress, go up to them and tell them. If you think someone's makeup looks really good, tell them. And being able to step outside of your comfort zone by talking to a stranger, I feel like it's not very common these days that when you do it, it allows you to stand out in front of other people. When I walk around my neighborhood every morning, I see the same people <laughs> where the early morning people who are walking in the dark, you know, some people are running, some people are walking their dogs. And every single person that I pass, I say good morning to. Good morning, hope you have a great day, or, you know, something to that effect. And it gives off an energy to people that I am open, I'm warm, I'm approachable. And instead of just walking past somebody and giving a little smile or not saying anything at all, like think about that energy difference. It's completely polar opposite. And then from there, some of the people that I see out in the morning, I then start seeing them in the gym. And then we start conversations that I've met some really sweet people just because the fact that I wasn't afraid to say good morning and speak to them while they were on their walk. The last verbal point I want to touch on about becoming magnetic is when you are speaking to somebody that you know 
and they've already told you a story before and then you go and say oh yeah you've already told me that it completely dismisses the way that somebody feels even if they've told you the story before allow them to tell you it again let them repeat it show them the same emotion and never make people feel not validated all right let's dive into the non-verbal ways to become magnetic these are the ones i love because it is very subtle it's that secret aura that you give off to people that they can't quite put their finger on first things first we're going to talk about one of the things i feel like is crucial to being magnetic and that is eye contact and it's something that i feel like a lot of people struggle with is to make eye contact with people for a normal amount of time so when you give eye contact to people it could be when you're passing by like i was talking about when i see people in the morning i give them eye contact and i say good morning it could be when you are giving somebody a handshake give them eye contact look at them and shake their hand and say their name but it could also be when you are just having a conversation with somebody and being engaged in that conversation is shown by giving eye contact. Imagine being in a conversation with somebody and you're telling them a story and they're looking at things around you and they're not fully looking at you. You are gonna clearly get the feeling that they are not engaged or even care about what you are saying. So work on your eye contact. Now, the next thing we're gonna talk about is to match pace and energy. So imagine you're in conversation with somebody and their tone is lower they're speaking slower and they're talking about something serious. And then you on the other hand are speaking fast, higher pitch, and you've got a lot of energy. It's not matching. That connection is not going to be there with that person. So in order for you to match pace and energy, you want to think about your communication breakdowns, verbal, body language, and tone. When you're mirroring and matching people, you want to think about how is the pace of what they're talking about? What is their tone? What's their energy level that they're giving off? How are they standing? What's their posture? What are their arms doing? And then you want to match that as much as you can. And I want to say now, never, ever, ever cross your arms when you are speaking to somebody, when you're in a room, when you're walking, because it gives closed off energy. The only time that I think it is acceptable for arms to be folded is when you're in conversation with somebody and they do it first, then you can do that. But other than that, it makes you seem really closed off and that you're not approachable. Next nonverbal tip on becoming magnetic is something that is so small and subtle but goes a long way. And that is the lean in. That is when you are speaking with somebody and you're in an engaged conversation and you give the slight lean in. It makes it feel like you genuinely care and are curious about what their next word is that they are saying. It is a very small but powerful way that makes them feel like you are hanging on to every single word of their story that they are telling. Trust me, try it. Now, speaking of body language, something that I learned a long time ago that always stuck with me and I've used it in videos pretty much all the time. And that is the open palms signal trust. So when I would shoot a lot of my videos when I was starting TikTok and still to this day, I would hold the phone in one arm and open my hand with the other one. And I would talk with my hand, but having that open palm, that open faced hand it signaled that people could trust me i'm open i'm here you can trust me and it worked so if you are able to think about that also i mean if you're someone who makes videos you can use it for that but more in the conversation with people is having an open palm and opening your body up it makes you feel approachable it makes you have that receiving energy and it makes people feel scientifically that they can trust you and that they can connect with you so the next point is do not rush this is a way that you are able to be around people it's a way that you can really just go through life to be honest with you where it's being on purpose it's not going and rushing through things rushing here rushing there you want to give off that you're doing things with purpose which i feel like is a balance between not being slow but not being rushed it's that you know the value of your time so you're doing things at a good pace 
but you're doing it with good posture, but it's an energy that you give off. If you are constantly rushed, whether you're running around doing things, you're running late to something, you're rushing, you know, a conversation with somebody because you have to go somewhere, it gives off chaos it gives off that you're not organized and so you always want to be on purpose you want to have good posture like we talked about the open body language open palms and allow things to develop the way that they are supposed to something that i think is crucial when it comes to nonverbal ways of being magnetic and speaking especially of the rushing part is when you walk through a room through a restaurant in the gym one put your phone down you don't need to be looking at your phone stand tall good posture like we talked about doing things on purpose but having the confidence to stand tall and own your space i think sometimes we think that we need to keep to ourselves but being okay with taking up space is such a beautiful confident thing to do I hope you enjoyed this episode on nonverbal and verbal ways in order to become more magnetic. Like I said, I think that communication is that foundation skill that you need to build. And then the being magnetic is just, it's the icing on the top. It's the aura, it's the energy, it's the allure that has people feeling your charisma, but they just can't put their finger on it. It's like a subtle art that you can build, but it's a great skill that you can learn. If you enjoyed this video, then I would love for you to share it with somebody that you know and you feel like it may help. And also, if you didn't already know, I have a highest and best group. It will be linked down below. It's completely free, but it has different tools, resources, and support in there of other people who are on the same journey of becoming their highest and best self. And it would be great for you to come in there and chit chat, enjoy the community. Thank you for listening and I'll see you in the next one.